Hello, welcome back to the Groove Agent 5 tutorial series. Today we're looking at recording data into Groove Agent, uh, basically using it as a sampler, recording real world live audio data, getting it in here, getting it on pads, and then we can do whatever we want with it once it's in once it's in Groove Agent as samples. So recording audio data really splits up into two main categories. You've got actual microphone based real noises. And then we've got internal VST based audio outputs. We can capture those as well. We'll deal with them separately. First things first, let's do the microphone side of things. Now, the way that we get audio from a microphone into Groove Agent is a little bit convoluted. If you don't know how to do it, it could take you a while to find, but it's actually really simple. We need to create ourselves an audio track and monitor enable it. Once I monitor enable this, the sound will go a little bit weird because I've got two audio sources that I'm recording. So I'll have to uh, switch my control room settings. So hopefully you can still hear me, hear me now. So we've uh, created our audio track. You don't have those problems if you're not recording, by the way, that this is just a peculiarity for, for my setup. Now we select the Groove Agent track, open that up. And at the top of Groove Agent, we've got this option called Activate Deactivate Side Chaining. So this is basically going to allow Groove Agent to listen for incoming audio sources. And we specify which audio sources it's to listen for by pressing this little cog, set up side chain routing. And we can add the microphone as a side chain source. So that's it. Groove Agent is now listening to me. Look at the green bars going up here. That microphone is live and it's being input into Groove Agent. So we can now record my voice directly as a sample inside Groove Agent. Let's do that. So if I press this record button with the simple mode, the single mode that we're in at the moment, it'll just start recording. You'll see it flatline and then I'll record some data. Mary had a little lamb and then it carries on recording until I press stop. That's it. We've now recorded our first pad based sample into Groove Agent. If I click this pad, Mary had a little lamb. There I am. Now, if I press this pad and let go before the sound starts, you're not going to hear it because the playback mode has defaulted to normal. Normal is no loop in Groove Agent parlance. I've got no idea why they keep messing with the naming conventions. I really wish Steinberg would decide what they're going to call the, the normal playback mode. Is it no loop or is it normal? So over on the sample page, you can see here it's set to no loop. If I set this to one shot, it means all subsequent recording I do in the sampler is going to automatically generate a one shot sample. There's absolutely nothing stopping us once we've recorded this, changing it to one shot. It's just a, a default setting. The third option available to us for playback modes is loop. And if we record it in loop mode, then by default, the sample would loop. Straightforward enough. It's a continuous mode loop, by the way. Now that's all very well and good. And we've recorded the sample, but it's not usable. Let's put something a little bit more percussion based in here reset the pad and in addition to recording some percussion sounds I'm going to do a clap. I'm going to also strip out that silence from the beginning and tail um, of the recording and the easiest way to do that is to set my start and stop settings to audio threshold and this means that when I record enable the, uh, the sample recorder now it's not going to start recording until it hears something that exceeds that threshold. Now, by default, it comes out at minus 30, but it turns out that I've got a mechanical mouse and it's actually triggering the record. So I've had to set it at minus 20, but for, for most purposes, minus 30 is absolutely fine. And then you saw once the sound had disappeared, the sound of my clap had disappeared, the audio threshold dropped below the minus 50 required to consider it no longer part of the sound and it terminated the sample. Let's have a look at that in the sample editor. Here it is. There's my clap. 
if I zoom into the beginning of the sample, you can see it dives straight into the sound. If that's a problem for you and you're losing the, the fractions of moments at the beginning of the sound, you can engage this function called pre and post. And what this will do is basically, once you record arm it, it puts it in a listen mode. So once you clap and that triggers the audio threshold and it starts recording, it's got 100 milliseconds worth of data in its buffer and it puts that at the beginning of the sample. Similarly, once it passes its cutoff threshold at the end of the playback, it drops below minus 50 dB, the sample stops, it arbitrarily adds another 500 milliseconds on just for safety. So you've got that space at the beginning and end of the sample that is going to guarantee that you're catching all of the transients. Both of those values can be edited to whatever you want them to be. So let's throw this away and do that instead. Okay. So now you can see we've got the silence at the beginning. Go to the sample editor. And now we zoom in. We can catch more of this transient at the beginning. See these sample start and end points? They're where Groove Agent thinks they should be. They've given you your extra 100 milliseconds at the front, 500 at the end, but they've put the sample start and end points where they think is sensible. If you click this full range button, it won't. It'll put those sample start and end points right at the extreme um, limits uh, of the sound. So here you see, I think that's dumb. <laughs> it's all well and good to give you a lead-in period, but still try to make an intelligent guess about where the sample start should be. So I can't, I don't think I've ever used this full range button, but that's what it does. Okay, so we've successfully recorded our first sample and we've got a percussion sound in the kit. Now let's look at how we can get a, a number of different sounds in a little bit more dynamically. If we enter sample mode, auto next instead. What this means is that we can record multiple sounds very quickly and each new sound is going to be routed to a particular destination specified by this mapping option. So if I set that to chromatic and every time it records a new sound it's going to auto increment the pad, the chromatic pad value, one semitone and wait for us to do something else. And then once that thing has happened, it'll auto increment again. Much easier to show you than explain. Let's do this. Okay. So here, it's got the sample start wrong. It's been too brutal with the beginning, but it's okay because we've got our auto lead in time. Pull that back a little bit. As, I, as my whistle sound began um, its, its journey out of my mouth, it was initially too quiet. And it's only when it got over that minus 20 threshold that Cubase actually decided it was, warrant, it was worthy of capturing but we had all of that in the buffer, so it's all good. And now we've got the whole whistle. Another setting that I like to use by default and just basically never turn this off really is have auto trim set to zero crossing. So it'll do all of that other stuff. But now when it's deciding what those sample start and end points are gonna be, it's always gonna be zero crossing. So you're not gonna get sample clicks. Let's have a look at the other way of getting audio data into Groove Agent now uh, via VSTs. And the first example I'm going to show you is your classic synth drum kit. Uh, I've used a uh, Korg Triton as my example. So here we've got you know, really straightforward stuff. Different sound on every single key. We're going to monitor, uh, enable that track, head over to Groove Agent, 
uh, head to our side chains. We need a new side chain input now. It's no longer the mic. We need Triton instead. So now Groove Agent is listening for audio data coming out of the Triton. I'm going to set C1 as my base key and I'm going to put the sample mode into auto next chromatic. I'm also just going to drop this audio threshold, you know, I set it to minus 20 because of the, the noise of my room. Well, I don't have a live microphone anymore, so I can set this back to minus 30. And we're good to go. You can see that I'm waiting for each sample to finish recording before hitting the next key. That's all it takes. Just a little bit of patience. You can do the entire drum kit in maybe two to three minutes. It's unbelievably fast. Once you're done, turn, turn record off. And you've just mapped the entire Korg drum kit into Groove Agent now. This is a usable kit. I didn't actually have pre, pre and post on there. It's probably a good idea to leave this on all the time. And then you've always got that flexibility for heading back uh, to catch a, a little bit more of the transients that might have been missed when, you, when you're doing this recording. So that was in audio threshold mode. If I wanted to use MIDI mode instead, I set MIDI note on for the start, MIDI note off for the stop. And now each time I play one of these keys, uh, it's going to record the sound for as long as I hold the note down. Now these are one shot hits, but I still need to hold that key down until it's pretty obvious to me that the sound is done. That's all very well and good with uh, very quick hits like this. But when you get to your cymbals, it becomes a lot harder to decide how long to hold your key down and then you're gonna to have to go in and manually edit this stuff I don't personally see a lot of value in the MIDI note on and off business it does guarantee that you're gonna get everything you know audio threshold is a little bit more woolly so you know there's that argument before I completely dismiss the MIDI side of things if you're a MIDI um, fan and you want to record using this uh, method if you set the auto trim to silence uh, we've got our A2 pad set up here. So I'll just hold this key down for an interminably long time. It did trim it back. So Groove Agent identified that most of this was a waste of time and correctly identified where the end of the sample was. So you can use auto trim for that purpose. Let's throw all that away. And the final example I want to show you is recording something like a piano. So this is something that has velocity layering. Let's have a look at how we could go about that. Add the ground as our sidechain source. Now I'm gonna leave sample mode in auto next, but change mapping to fixed because I'm going to want to play the same note multiple times at different velocities and I want Groove Agent to put them all on the same all on the same pad. Now obviously if you were doing this for real you'd hold this note down until there was absolutely nothing there but that's good enough for the purpose of demonstration. Now a slightly louder note and these are all being added to C1 the note and then the loudest that will do us four it's fine when these are done by the big boys every single key has its own you know that that's a completely different situation and now we switch to next key c sharp one start the entire process again 
So this is where you use fixed mapping, where you're doing multiple sampling on a single pad, and Groove Agent isn't going to be work, able to work out what you're doing. It's not chromatic. And now those two notes are multi multi-layered. They've each got that one had three. This one over here, we got a little bit more carried away and did four. You can see each of the samples getting louder and louder. So there's a lot of different options available to you, but fundamentally you can actually get by with a very tiny subset of them. For the vast majority of the time, I would recommend sticking with audio threshold. If you find out groove agents either not being too not being responsive enough or uh, tailing your sample off before it's actually finished, change your thresholds, have a mess around with them, see if you can get to a setting where it can intelligently identify the, the, the amount of sound that you're trying to capture. It's gonna make your life an awful lot easier than having to do the note on note off thing and then manually mess around with your sample starts and ends later. The audio threshold is actually really, really good. So that's the recorder page dealt with. I hope you found the video useful. If you did, please consider subscribing, hit notifications. You'll be sure not to, uh, not to miss the next episode. Hope to see you then. Thanks a lot.